If you are not in Christ, you can pursue money at the expense of your salvation, pursue whatever it is, a job, a career, an ambition. But when you come into Christ, he begins to reorder. There is an order with which things must be in your life for your Christian experience to profit you. If there is anything in your life that becomes a greater desire, commands your affection above your love for Jesus Christ, it will tamper with your efficiency. That's how God designed man. God designed man such that he becomes your highest obsession. He becomes your highest priority. Your affection literally, literally becomes upon Jesus above every other thing now it does not mean you will be like we say heavenly uh, what they call you, earthly useless and heavenly useful or something like that you see that now there are people who have made that mistake and they have failed in every other area of their life and credited their failure in life and destiny to their love for Jesus I do not believe that what he does is that he keeps transiting the love of God in your heart until it becomes greater than money greater than titles who is God speaking to greater than ambition you really become a spiritual man when you get to a point where nothing and no one can take the place of God in your life someone say your affection one more time say your affection there are many people who claim they are spiritual people but they have many many idols piles of idols within their heart that will never allow them to serve the purposes of god effectively show me a man who has journeyed with the spirit in life and destiny and is about to access power and grace the first thing god deals with is your heart and your affection let me tell you the truth this affection issue bar it can take 10 years with the holy ghost working on you don't you think it's just one service or three days retreat? There are idols already in our hearts before we got saved. And those idols will not live on their own. You have to allow the Spirit of God to keep going through that process of circumcision until you get to a point where He, become your, he becomes your highest priority. It is that state in the Spirit the Bible calls death. Death there does not mean to cease to live. Death there does not mean to cease to be useful to your environment. Many people want power. Many people want grace. They fast, they pray, but they refuse to allow God do that circumcision within their heart until Jesus and his purposes becomes your highest priority. It is not the pathway for a preacher. It is the pathway for a spiritual man. It has nothing to do with answering the call to ministry. If you want to be used by God, you want to become one who is mighty and of weight in the spirit. I am telling you, the first thing that defines spirituality is this circumcision that the spirit of God will have to met out upon your heart. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Mm. my son you are my son but give me thine heart everybody say thy heart my son give me your heart this is how God makes men spiritual no matter how many verses you recite there is a place for it no matter how many crusades you attend or organize no matter how much money you give in church ladies and gentlemen hear me the foundation for true spirituality is death to self that means christ being exalted through your motives your desires until all that is left in your life is christ what's the one thing holding you back from living the life god has called you to i bet it's fear fear that whispers you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. 
Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical steps to overcome fear. So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.